Hello again, I'm here today to discuss a potentially uncomfortable topic, one that I think is worth bringing up, how Ruby handles death in contrast to other media. As you can imagine, there may be some upsetting content in this episode, so I won't blame anyone who needs to skip. But before we start, thank you as always to my wonderful patrons for making these episodes possible. Now, what do I mean by that title, Ruby is taking death seriously? Well, it can be related to a lot of things, like how in a lot of media killing isn't taken all that seriously at all, either by the characters or the narrative, or how it's only murder if they aren't faceless mooks. The latter can at least be an unintentional example of how a million is a statistic, but for the most part that isn't what I'm getting at. In this case I'm talking about the act of dying itself. In a lot of media, even ones once famed for their uh, quote-unquote realism, death is often rather drawn out, dramatic, elegantly framed, and in many ways rather accommodating for stuff like last words. When it is fast or brutal, it's usually because the character wasn't important or to make a point, and regardless, it happens rarely outside of horror. Which usually doesn't treat death that seriously in the narrative because we're meant to at least appreciate the spectacle or annoying people dying. Ruby, however, is very different. The writers and animators really seem to want to embrace and more to the point portray how sudden, horrible, and terrifying death actually is. Not out of some desire to glorify it, but instead to emphasize just how horrible it is and even how painful the act of bringing death can be. Media will sometimes dance with the latter, but usually even then I often find it rather overstated or overwrought compared to Blake and Yang's reaction to killing Adam. The quaking horror mingled with adrenaline crash and relief born of safety, the sobbing and quietly understated guilt that accompanies an act they knew was necessary but still found traumatizing. It just felt very grounded, but as to the deaths themselves, well look no farther than Pira. We knew she was racing into a hopeless fight, but we didn't realize how horrifying that would be until her tendon was pierced and she screamed, followed by the helplessness and pain that followed. Then her death itself, it was, well you saw the wide eyes, the gasping choking sounds of trying and failing to breathe. There was no relief, no time to speak, or even fully process anything but the sudden pain and the terror brought on by her body trying to keep her alive and failing as the reality that this was it washed over her, and then, gone. That's what a lot of real deaths are like, painful, sudden, but not immediate and terrifying. Pyrrha's death embodied it well, I feel. Roman is on the opposite side of things. His death is the embodiment of sudden death, of chaos and unpredictability taking you away in an instant. Because it turns out he was right, the real world didn't care about spirit, or how hard he cheated, lied, or tried to survive. He was consumed by the blaze he helped start to save himself. This carries on. We see the sudden realization and terror on Fennec's face moments before he dies, and the spare it induces in his brother. Leo's death is largely off screen, but we can see and feel his desperation, the pain and terror suffusing the room. It makes even a contemptible man pitiable for the empathy it inspires as the fight is ripped out of him. Sienna's is defiant and painful and gosh it makes me so angry I want her back, but we see the fall and the sudden gasping pain before the silence and ugh. Then there's Adam's last ditch effort to kill Blake and Yang, which ends with him double stabbed and his body losing all power as he's only able to come to grips with the fact he's not the main character and then and there, before dying in an ugly crunch echoing as his skull smashes ignobly against rock before hitting the freezing waters. Rhodes' death is sudden, seemingly as shocking to Cinder as it was to him, and it's probably the most cinematic death and it's still followed with an undignified fall to the floor as Cinder cries. Hell, even Madame, Toc, and Watts and Jacques' deaths embody the horror of the axe for all that one can laugh and say they deserved it. The dawning moment of realization sounds of visceral strikes against Toc's spine and neck, Watts' agonized, terrified screams as he tries desperately to get out, Jacques' cringing dread and terror as he realizes what's about to happen but can't bring himself to admit it, let alone the sheer helplessness as Ironwood gives up, convinced that if he couldn't win there was no point in even trying. Don't even get me started on Penny or I might honestly start crying. Even the civilians of places like Mantle or Brunswick, whom we don't see, get the horror of their circumstances portrayed and a deserved sense of empathy conveyed. Serious injuries get similar treatments, Yang losing her arm and the ensuing helplessness, the painful, visceral sound of Blake being stabbed, and Maria screaming and, and desperately scrambling in the wake of her eye loss. These ideas weren't always conveyed as ably in the early volumes, but the longer the series has run, the clearer Ruby makes it that they don't want us forgetting that these are people, that death isn't something to shrug off or glamorize. And they do this by making it hauntingly realistic. A single serious stab wound in Ruby is more visceral and disquieting to me than any number of horror movies or action movie deaths I could name, because when it happens, I feel it in my bones. Well that's all for today, if you want to help out with my work, please swing by my Patreon where you can also get early previews of episodes, scripts, 3D models and more. You can also throw me a tip via coffee or commission art and maybe even episodes. Thanks for stopping by!